Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is the game. Jeremy McWilliams, remember the name. What's up guys? Welcome to the video. First things first, if you don't know me, my name's Jeremy McWilliams, aka MC Williams. And for everyone out there watching that is familiar with me already, thanks for tuning in again. Let's get started. I've been reselling shoes and sneakers now for, I want to say probably somewhere around two years. And up until maybe like two months ago, the vast majority of my sales by far all came from eBay. And for the most part, the majority of those shoes or sneakers sold on eBay were brand new, but they didn't come with the original box like this one. So in that case, I would say like 95% of the time, I ship my shoes and sneakers using these free USPS priority mail shoe boxes. Now I've already made a video detailing the step-by-step -step guide slash tutorial to how exactly I pack my shoes sold on eBay and ship them using these free USPS boxes. So if you're interested in that, I'll link it down below. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about the shoes you resell on either eBay, GOAT, StockX, any of that, that are brand new with the original box, like these Nikes, or much more recently, which is why I said the past like two or three-ish months, I've really had to uh, try and fine tune this packing method because I've been selling a ton of pair of kicks on GOAT lately. And if you sell shoes on GOAT, you already know this, but for those of you that don't, they actually send you a prepaid UPS shipping label. And since it's UPS, that means we can't use the USPS boxes. So what do you do if you sell a pair of shoes without the original box on GOAT? Or even in some cases on eBay and maybe you don't want to use the USPS for whatever reason. I won't go over StockX because as far as I'm aware, you can't resell shoes and sneakers on StockX unless they come with the original box. So this video is just mostly going to cover shipping with GOAT whether it involves shipping shoes without the original box or with the original box. I personally use three different sizes of boxes to ship my shoes, depending on if the shoes or sneakers come with the original box and how big they are. So we're gonna use these ones as an example in this video because I actually have to ship these out using GOAT today. And like I said earlier, since I'm using GOAT, that means no USPS. And as you can see, these Nike soccer cleats do not come with the original box. So instead, I use these 14 by 10 by 6 boxes, which in my opinion are pretty much the perfect size to ship shoes that come in the original box like these Nikes. And these shoes happen to be a size 8, so once again, you guys can see how they fit in this size box. Now obviously a size 8 is not the biggest size by any means. I'd say for the most part, the majority of shoes and sneakers that I resell are probably between, I would say like size 8 and size 13. So that is why I'm going to show you how these size 11 Nike soccer cleats fit in the same box. You can see they're nice and tight. There's not too much space from a flop around in there. But as you can see, there is a little bit extra space in there. Just in case your shoe box is a little bit bigger than these size 11s. Now sometimes, obviously, you're shipping a pair of shoes like these ones, for instance, that are a size 7 and clearly are not getting shipped with the original box. So for these ones, you don't exactly need a box as big as this one. So for smaller shoes like these, I'll use a box that's sized a little bit smaller. Now obviously, this size box would work just fine. And if you're trying to stock up supplies and you buy your shipping supplies in bulk, you might be better off just buying like one or two sizes. If you're looking for a one size fits all box, I'd recommend this 14 by 10 by 6 size. And if you guys are interested in this exact box, I'll link that below on Amazon as well. With that said, honestly, the size of the box is more than like half the battle. So after you figure out the right size box, it makes things a whole lot easier. Eventually. So once you tape up the bottom of the box so that it's nice and sturdy, that's obviously when the next step and the most important step comes into play, which is actually putting slash packaging the shoes in the box. Rip off a couple of tiny sheets of bubble wrap, maybe like one or two for each shoe, depending on how big they are. And then what I do with those is I'll take the bubble wrap, fold it in half once, fold it in half twice. So we got a nice little square going on and then fold it in half one more time so it looks a little something like this. Obviously, there's a ton of different ways you could pack and ship your shoes, but the reason I do it like this and stuff bubble wrap into the shoes is so that it helps protect them and helps them hold their shape because you really never know 
what kind of trauma these guys might go through on the way to your customer's destination. So you definitely want to do your best job to make sure that they arrive to your customer in the exact same shape they were in when they left. So enough talking, take the bubble wrap, kind of fold it in half like a hot dog, and then I like to try and push it all the way to the front or the toes of the shoe so that you have as much protection here as possible. And then like I said earlier, depending on how big the shoe is, that pretty much determines how many pieces of bubble wrap I stuff in there. Obviously it's up to you, but I personally usually use about two or three of this size little bubble wrap squares when I'm packing my shoes. Like I said, for these ones, they're a tiny size seven. So two little wads of bubble wrap pretty much fill up the whole shoe and give the shoe more than enough protection as far as holding its form and keeping away those creases that nobody wants when they're getting a new pair of kicks. So now that we're done with this one, on to the next one. And then once you're done with the second shoe, put this one in the box as well. And one other little thing I want to point out real quick that I know I mentioned in my other shoe shipping videos, which like I said, if you are interested in any of those, I'll link those down below, is that especially if the shoe comes from Ross, make sure you clean up the spot on the bottom of the shoe right here where Ross likes to, for some reason or another, put the price of shoes. Like there's a huge group of people out there just cruising around, wanting the price of their brand new kicks on the bottom of their shoe, just to remind them. But for real though, make sure you do that. Because in pretty much every case I can think of, I personally wouldn't want the customer to know how much I actually bought the shoes for. And I would think you probably don't either. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, which is also obvious, and a lot of you watching probably already know it, but you gotta also make sure to take the price tag off from wherever you got the shoes from. So for instance, like these ones, you guys can see these came from Ross, so make sure I clip that off before I send it to the customer. And then like I also said, clean off the price on the bottom of the shoe. Now if you don't know, but you wanna know how to do that, I also made a video on it, which I'll link below as well. So now that you got your shoe box picked out and ready to go, and you got your shoes ready to go as well, there's a ton of different ways you could do this. I'm a fan of bubble wrap, but personally, I like to use these little UPS padded mailers, mostly because I do a lot of business with UPS, and I get these for free as well, which obviously is a good thing. It means we're saving cost, being as efficient as we can with the packaging. So whatever works the best for you, obviously it's probably the best way to go about it. Just make sure the shoes are protected, whether you use bubble mailers, bubble wrap, whatever. These are free for me because I have a UPS business account. If you don't have an account with them, I honestly have no idea how much they would charge for them or how you'd go about acquiring them. But obviously there's a lot more places than just UPS that you can buy mailers. If you wanna go this route and use padded mailers, and since these shoes are so small, we should pretty easily be able to fit both of them in this one little mailer. Just gotta make sure you put them in the right way, which you always want the bottom of the shoe facing the outside of the mailer like this. We'll take these ones, put them on this side right here, and then take the other one, bottom of the shoe on this side, and there we go, we got a nice little shoe burrito. And then on real quickly to the next step, which is sealing the padded mailer so that no moisture or dust or dirt or any of that crap gets in there and ruins your shoes. So for the padded mailer, it's easy obviously. Just pull off this little adhesive strip, fold it down like this, and then stick it on and seal it best you can, just like this. And after I do this step, personally, I like to go maybe a little bit overboard and take a little piece of shipping tape and use that little piece of tape to just seal the corner right here just for a little bit of extra amount of added protection. And obviously, take another piece of tape and do the same thing on the other side. And then when your shoe burrito's all sealed up, packaged nice and ready to go, obviously the next step is to put the shoes in the box like so. And with the bubble wrap and the padded mailer, we should definitely be good to go as far as protecting these guys. So after this step, you're almost done. And the next step depends on whether you're selling your shoes with eBay or GOAT. If you're using GOAT, like we are on this video, as I mentioned earlier, they email you a prepaid shipping label, which as you guys can see right here, their prepaid label covers everything up to four pounds. So print that off. And then once again, if you're using GOAT, along with the prepaid shipping label. They'll actually send you two pages. The first page will be the label, and the second page will be a cover sheet that looks something like this, with this giant barcode in the middle of it. So make sure you print that off, and before you package up your shoes and drop them off at the UPS store, just take this, drop it on top. Or obviously, if it's an eBay sale, I'd recommend printing off a packing slip, folding it in half, 
And then once again, obviously, just put the eBay packing slip at the top of the box, just like I showed you with the goat one. Once everything's all packaged nice and tight inside, close up the box, seal it up, tape it up, and then you're good to go. Now one more thing I just want to point out real quick before I go ahead and wrap up this video is, we'll go back to the shoebox example. If you sold a pair of shoes or sneakers on GOAT that comes with the original box, like these Nike high-end cleats, as I mentioned earlier, I definitely recommend using one of these boxes. And then we've got our size 11 cleats that fit in there nice and snug, but still just enough room to get in a bigger size box if you need to. And then of course, just like these shoes that don't come in the original box, if you're shipping shoes that do come in the original box, don't forget to use protection. So once again, I personally like to make use of these padded mailers. Usually I'll just put like maybe one on the bottom like that, put the shoe box in, take another padded mailer, and then put that one on top and just kind of try and cover the sides if you can as well just to give it that little extra bit of protection because like I said before, you really never know what kind of journey slash trauma these guys may or may not go through on the way to their final destination. So do your best, always use protection. This is kind of starting to sound like a different type of video. So before we get too far off the tracks, obviously once again, if you don't have access to free bubble mailers or you don't want to, you can always substitute for the good old fashioned bubble wrap. So with that said, my friends, I'm gonna go back to the smaller size box, grab the shoes that I need to go ahead and drop off to UPS today to send a goat, put them back in the smaller box, then make sure I have the right cover sheet with the giant barcode, fold that back up, place it on top, and now I'll go ahead and finish taping up this box. Like so and then peel off the shipping label and slap it on the box like uh, and off to the UPS store we go. And just like that, that my friends is a wrap. So I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, as always, drop them below. I'll do my best to help you out. If not, no worries, I'll catch you in the next video. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your night. Stay sane, stay safe, and as always, stay limitless. Take a shot, you got everything you'll ever need. You fought, you're not gonna let up on the speed. Those knots, they got you, were only make believe. Those